yeah, welcome in, welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Obviously, got a different uh, look on the setup here today. Have some work going on inside the house, so I uh, came to sit outside in the backyard and go ahead and uh, do this show, which uh, should be pretty interesting for you today. But before we get to that, you know what time it is. If you haven't already and you're here on YouTube, please go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, and that notification bell. Make sure you're up to date whenever new episodes drop. If you want the audio-only episode of the podcast, then open up your audio podcast platform, type in the format podcast, do a little search. We should be able to come right up. Um, if you enjoy the show, please give us your uh, thumbs up or give us that five-star review. Make sure you share the podcast with other people who you know might want to hear some uh, sports talk that's a little different from the average. Uh, make sure you do all these things because it helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. Let's get right to it. So in the NBA, right, the GOAT debate is just something that's it's going to keep on going, right? And um, I, I suppose it's gone on for a while now, for many, many years, but never uh, so much in earnest as it has been since LeBron James came along and made himself the type of player that he has and has had the type of career that he has. But um, a lot of times the GOAT debate and people's opinion on it goes along generational lines in terms of who they grew up watching, who they think is the best, what era they prefer, so on and so forth, right? So the latest person to weigh in on the GOAT debate um, is NBA legend Dr. J, Julius Irving. Now, Dr. J was one of the original high flyers, one of the original all-time greats. And maybe at some point for some guys, he was in the GOAT debate himself, right? But I think a big part of why maybe Dr. J doesn't quite get the respect that he should in terms of where he places on the all-time list is that for the first half of his career, he played it in the ABA, which had some very good players, but you know, obviously that's the secondary league to the NBA. So he played a lot of his career in, in the ABA and, um, you know, before coming over to the NBA where he won an MVP, he won a championship, I think played in two or three finals. But um, yeah, Dr. J is one of the all timers. And, you know, like I say, he was one of the original high flying types, one of the original super athletic wing guys. Um, not the greatest defender, obviously not the greatest shooter. Again, back then shooting was kind of you always had good shooters, but shooting was measured differently back then because uh, until 1980, there was no three-point line in the NBA. And then even when there was a three-point line in the NBA, prevailing wisdom, which seems logical, was that you wanted the highest percentage shot, which is generally the shot closest to the rim. But I digress. Not really going to get into, you know, evaluating the, the thought processes from uh, NBA and ABA coaches and franchises throughout the years. But... Um, yeah, Dr. J is one of the original all-time greats. So recently, uh, he was asked um, what was his take on the GOAT argument, and it was interesting. Obviously, he was given the two choices, Michael Jordan and LeBron James, which are uh, most people's top two in the GOAT debate. Um, for me, uh, that GOAT debate is probably between uh, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and then on a slightly lower level, Magic Johnson. And the only reason that I have Magic up there is because as great as Kareem was, he wasn't winning in Los Angeles until Magic got there. But again, that's that's another discussion. So anyway, um, Michael Jordan and LeBron James and Dr. J was asked about it, and he had some interesting commentary. I'll read you his comments. He says, I think it's always happened, meaning the go debate. I think people always make comparisons to people who are done. LeBron may play another six years. We really don't know. But I think it's a fan's argument, not the player's argument. So I stay away from it. Now, these are Dr. J's comments in 2017. So that was six years ago when he said that. Then he goes on to say, my all-time greatest player, so I guess who he has to go, is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I think when you add up the numbers and add up the years, nobody has contributed more to NBA history or pro basketball history. It's very subjective for you to say Michael or LeBron, who was better, or who was the greatest, the GOAT. That's for the fans to argue about. And so this is where it gets interesting to me, right? Obviously, um, Dr. J, he's a New York guy, so he would have grown up knowing about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, they were in college about the same time. Dr. J playing at UMass, Kareem winning championships at uh, UCLA with the legendary John Wooden. Um, and then obviously they went their separate ways, ABA, NBA. And coincidentally, this was something interesting I just recently learned about. 
there was something on the table. I can't remember how it, you know, what went down that it didn't work out, but Kareem and Dr. J could have played together in Milwaukee. Something happened that it didn't work out. But could you have imagined that? Dr. J, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and possibly uh, Oscar Robertson. That would have been insane. That might have completely changed NBA history, but a uh, different story. So anyway, um, Dr. J, you hear him. He says he feels like the GOAT debate for the fans to argue about. He says he believes his greatest all-time is Kareem. Now, again, I think a big part of that, those guys grew up quite playing against each other in the Rucker. They grew up knowing each other, being, you know, New York guys, Dr. J from Long Island, Kareem from Manhattan. Um, uh, I don't know if they played against each other ever in college, but just, you know, knowing each other at that time, growing up, being competitors once against each other once they hit the NBA and, you know, very closely watching each other's careers. So I kind of get why Dr. J would have said that. Um, but I had another interesting thought on it. Now, remember I mentioned that Dr. J was you know, the preeminent high flyer in league history prior to Michael Jordan, right? So in the ABA days, you also had David Thompson, who Michael Jordan has mentioned many times. You had Connie Hawkins, the Hawk. But um, Kareem is, uh, sorry, Dr. J is generally known as the preeminent high flyer prior to Michael Jordan. And then Michael Jordan took that over and took it to a whole nother level. And so I'm not going to say Dr. J is jealous of Michael Jordan. I have no idea. I don't know if they have a relationship or not, if it's good, if it's bad, if they have one. But I do find it interesting that the guy that he would have competed against Michael Jordan right at the beginning of Jordan's career and right at the end of his. But I find it interesting that the guy who most people consider now to be the greatest of all time is the guy who eclipsed him as the greatest high flyer of all time. Now, I'm just spitballing here. Again, I don't know either one. I'm not saying Dr. J is jealous. I'm not saying anything like that, but I do find it interesting that most people, even the majority of today's players in the NBA, who a recent poll has uh, stated that they still believe Michael Jordan is the GOAT over LeBron, but a guy who actually shared the floor in terms of playing against Michael Jordan, a guy who competed against him, and a guy who kind of was Michael Jordan prior to Michael Jordan in terms of all the aerial acrobatics and so on and so forth, would name Kareem as the all-time greatest. It's kind of like um, Isaiah Thomas, a guy who consistently competed at almost the highest level, because obviously they were both in the East, him and Michael Jordan, so they didn't get to play each other in the finals, but Eastern Conference finals many times. Isaiah now says that he doesn't see Michael Jordan as the greatest of all time. So there's something to be said, I think, for competition and how it makes you feel about someone that you competed against and maybe not being quite willing to give them that nod as the greatest of all time, especially someone who, to some degree, replaced you in a certain style of play. So I, I just thought it was interesting that Dr. J said that. So quick note before I get out of here, why I don't have Kareem as the GOAT and um, a guy like Nick Wright, uh, co-host of First Things First on Fox Sports 1, he actually has Kareem Abdul-Jabbar ahead of Michael Jordan on the all-time greatest list. Of course, we know he has LeBron first. He has Kareem Abdul-Jabbar second, Michael Jordan third. Now, him, um, he has, we know that the reason he has Kareem ahead of Jordan is because he will do anything to try and de denigrate or degrade Jordan's legacy so he can prop up LeBron. We know that. Just listen to him talk and you hear it. But anyway, for me, um, the reason that I don't put Kareem as the GOAT is that he's got six championships, six MVPs, and he is all-time, all-time great. He may, and I'm saying may, have the best uh, uh, basketball career in history. Interesting, when people talk about the greatest basketball career in history, they don't bring up Bill Russell. Because uh, Bill Russell has an Olympic gold medal, which Kareem does not. I think Bill Russell has um, two national championships. Kareem has three. Uh, Bill Russell has the state championships in high school in California. We know Kareem, I think, lost either zero or one game in his high school career. And then Bill Russell has the 13 championships in the NBA. So I think career for career, you could put Bill Russell and Kareem right next to each other and Bill Russell would stand up just fine. Now, my point I'm making about Kareem is um, he came into the league, Milwaukee Bucks, outstanding. I think like for his first eight years, he averaged like 28 and 16. He was an absolute monster. So anyway, here's the problem. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar never won a championship without a Hall of Fame point guard. So... The, the Milwaukee Bucks bring in Oscar Robertson towards the end of his career. 
And when Oscar was at his best, he couldn't get past those Celtics teams with Bill Russell and those guys. But he teams up with Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he wins a championship there. Um, two years later, Kareem asked for a trade to one of the coasts, either to New York or to LA. The Bucks facilitate that trade to LA for him. He goes to the Lakers and he's winning MVPs. He's leading the league in scoring, but what? He's not even getting out of the conference. He's losing to Bill Walton and the Blazers in the in the uh, in the Western Conference playoffs. He's not getting out of the conference. He's not even playing in the finals. Now Magic comes along. Kareem wins another MVP. No shade at Kareem, but it's very interesting that Magic comes along, and all of a sudden that's when the Lakers start running off five more championships. And so for me, that is and and again, I've heard uh, Fox Sports One analyst uh, Chris Broussard and. Uh, uh, Rob Parker discussed this when you're talking about the greats and the all-time greats you start nitpicking because they're all so great that you have to look at the little things that may put one ahead of the other and for me that's the issue Kareem never won without that Hall of Fame point guard so he didn't win until he got uh, Oscar Robertson in Milwaukee then he leaves can't even make the finals in the West until Magic Johnson comes along and he's still winning MVPs he got I think two more finals MVPs playing with the Lakers and Magic but Magic was clearly the linchpin who pushed those Lakers teams over the top. So anyway, for me, the GOAT is Michael Jordan because, you know, he was that guy. Now, some people are going to say, oh, he was one in nine in the playoffs without Scottie Pippen. He couldn't win without Scottie. But if we want to be honest, he forged Scottie into what Scottie became. And after Michael left, Scottie still played on two other very good teams and couldn't win a championship. So if we really want to be honest about it and not disingenuous trying to put some pro LeBron narrative the fact is Scottie Pippen couldn't win without Michael Jordan either and Michael Jordan is who made Scottie into the Scottie that we know now as a 50 and 75 um, all-time greatest player so anyway um, what I want to know from you what do you think about Dr. J picking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the all-time greatest player in his mind uh, what do you think do you think that there's maybe a little bit of envy when it comes to Michael Jordan supplanting him as a preeminent high flyer in history. Go ahead, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Can't wait to hear from you. And I'll be back with the next episode. And I'm out. Peace.